God bless, God bless everybody today. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Lizardo. Praise the Lord. Messengers of Light. I just want to say God is alive in the world through Zoom, through our ministry, Messengers of Light. And uh, I want to say God bless everybody today. Praise the Lord. First, I want to put my brothers and sisters to greet everybody. Uh, Sister Kathy, say good morning to everybody. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, Brother BJ. Good morning. God bless everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Sylvia. Wait, hold on. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Happy Amen. to be here. Amen. Uh, Sister God bless Jackie. everyone. Have a blessed day. Amen. Uh, Sister Julie. She's Julie, can you, are you there? Okay, praise the Lord. So we're going to do praise the Lord. I'm God bless you, everybody. Now. Good morning. Go Good morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Bishop had to go somewhere. She'll be back in a little while, praise the Lord. But I started um, talking, praise the Lord. And I'll get back to the microphone. But uh, let's make praise around, praise the Lord. Before we start here in the Corinthians in a few minutes. So we're going to have, um, this the silver. You want to pray? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pray for the Zoom, for the brothers and sisters. Amen. That God will uh, speak today. Go ahead. Father, we thank you, my Lord, that we are gathered here together. Father, um, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for Praise this the day, Lord. my Lord. Father, we put this day before you. And uh, we just thank you, Father, that we can come to you every single day early in the morning, seeking you, praying, seeking your word, Father. We just ask you to bless our meeting this, today, Lord. Um, speak to us in a special way, Father. Yes, your word, Father, we ask oh. you to oh. answer our prayers, my Lord. Yes, Lord. I ask you to glorify yourself, Father, in our prayers, in our petitions, Father. And I also ask you to minister to each and every one of us, renew mm. our hearts, renew our spirits. We lift up um, our brothers and sisters here today, my Lord, their needs. And we just thank you, Father, um, that we can come to you in every situation and just glorify yourself, Father, today. Um, in our prayers, and we lift up um, every right. world to you, my Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' holy name, Father. Amen. Amen. Uh, sister Jackie, praise the Lord. You may pray also, my dear sister, for you could pray that God will restore the souls out there. They were here to us to let you to Zoom. They will, they will hear the message. Go ahead. <laughs> Heavenly Father, first of all, I want to say thank you, Lord, for allowing me to wake up this morning, for allowing my family to wake up this morning. Father, we ask you in the mighty name of, G of Jesus, your son, Lord, that you will bring the souls to you, Lord, Father God. For those that are listening, Lord, give them ears to hear, Lord, what word you will give them today, Lord, Father God. For those that are there is nothing yes, impossible for you. We ask you to bring the souls, Father God, for your word says that all souls belong to you, Lord, Father God. Father, our families included, our neighbors, Lord, Father God, our co-workers, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, brother B, I want you to pray, my brother, that God will um, uh, speak today. Praise the Lord and uh, God will them fight the body of Christ. Go ahead. Vive Dios. Amen. Father, we just thank you today, Lord, that you identified the body of Christ. Father God, just continue to bless and um, every one of us, Lord, even us on the Zoom today, Father God, be in the midst of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Continue to heal us and heal us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as we come together. Brother and brother and sister, they love, Lord, and let us continue to go forth yes, in the mighty Lord. name of Jesus Christ, and we command the day, Lord, we command this day to be blessed, to be healing, to be deliverance, Lord. 
Son, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we just glorify your name, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Kathy, I want you to pray that God clear the hemisphere. Amen. Let God rebuke any kind of identities, anything distracting and disturbing us before we start, man. May you pray. Amen. Dear Lord God, Father Jesus, we pray this morning. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father. Thank you for allowing us to be together in this Zoom meeting, Father. Father, right now at this morning, I pray, dear Lord God, for you to uh, remove, Father Jesus, any distractions. Remove, Father Jesus, any any principalities and powers. Remove, Father Jesus, any 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 spirit contrary to your spirit, Father, in this Zoom meeting, Father. I pray that you clear the atmosphere, Father Jesus. Amen. And that your Holy Spirit be the one leading and guiding us, Father, this morning. In your name, dear Lord God, Father, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our sister, uh, Yuli, I want you to pray sweet that God will bless the body of Christ with health, man. And when the body of Christ, it, it gets also sick spiritually. Pray that God heal it spiritually first and physically. That's why it says in the best of John and third John. That he says that, and third John 2 says it like this, that, beloved, what's about this? You prosper being in health as thy soul prosper. So pray that God will prosper our soul. You will prosper inner man before the outer man. Go ahead. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord. For those that are sick spiritually, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you may bring them unto your mighty cross, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind all infirmity, sickness, mental disease, diabetes. Ah, we rebuke leukemia. We rebuke high blood pressure, low blood pressure, bad circulation, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come against physical sickness, mental sickness, Lord Father God, internal sickness, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, your word says that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind, Lord Father God. Father, you also gave us your word, your guidance, uh, the lamp to our name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you this morning for waking me up. I appreciate everything that you put in my hands, everything that you give me, Lord. The way that you bless me, Lord, I appreciate it, Lord. Put appreciation in the hearts, Lord Father God. If they have lost their way, bring them back, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus. If they have fallen because they lusted after something, we rebuke lust, Lord Father God, or sickness, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you, Father. I thank you this morning, Lord Father God. Thank you. Yes, I come God. against Lord, all Lord, sicknesses, Lord. spiritually, mentally, and Lord, emotionally. We agree, we agree Lord. Lord. We agree, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Now, before I start, well, um, Kathy, you want, you want to hear the word today? You got yes. a word for you? Can read, you? Okay, you got it? Go ahead. We have it from Psalms, whatever God's putting your thought. Go ahead. Your spirit. Okay, this morning I'm going to read Psalm number one. Psalms one. Let's go there, everybody. Psalms one. Thank the Lord. Psalms one. You got to pardon me. I'm driving right now. No, just listen, sweetie. Don't worry. Just li you can. Go ahead. Just listen. All right. Psalms okay. one. Amen. When you're ready. Okay, the word of God is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Oh God. Amen. What a song, right? So God's us that, uh, the, Can the, somebody the text me that? So it says in Psalms 1, verse 2, I like that verse. It says that he, he delights in the law of the Lord. And his law, he meditates day and night. So we got to meditate in the word day and night. Amen. If, 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 if we meditate day and night, God's going to do. We're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, brothers and sisters. What's going to happen? You're going to bear fruits in your seasons, and your leaves should not wither. Nothing's going to wither. What's going to happen? And what you do? Everything you do is going to prosper. 
That's an awesome promise of the Lord. But the ungodly, they're going to perish because they know they choose. That's what it's, it's a promise. It's a wasting right to a man sent for his death. So, man, what I got, he's nothing. That's what I said. What I mean, you can do nothing. He's only towards disciples. You could be the most intelligent, brilliant. You could be the greatest uh, uh, developer, uh, CEO, whatever, man, business, whatever. But what I got, you nothing. That's what he told his disciple. Once man gets the whole world, he loses his own soul. Man was, man was created to worship God, man. Man was created to seek God constantly. But what happened was cut off by Adam and Eve. Adam came in, Eve came and deceived him. And the thought was cut off. And he had to be self-sufficient self and seek his own ways instead of seeking God. But I think God came and gave him a chance, you know, to repent. He had, um, he had told me with a sacrifice of an animal. He clothed him with an innocent animal. But quite it was the blood. He had to come with the blood. So it says in the Hebrews, without the blood, there's no remission of sin. So it's the blood of Christ washes for no sickness and sins and become brand new again. That's what we got to accept. That's what I said with a heart believe, with a mouth confess, you should be saved. And God wants to heal. He wants to deliver. But people got to draw them so to the Lord. But how it happened by listening to the message. That's what I said. Faith comes by hearing. That's what we're hearing in Zoom. Telling people out in the world that God is alive and well through us. That he's doing great things through us. That he's a real God. That he don't play with nobody. That he wants to heal and restore him. And bring back to the right relationship with him. And give right the, back, back, back the right identity. Amen? Uh, so this is not there. So I, must, I guess I'm opening a book. Let's go to the book of Corinthians. Amen? Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians. To the Corinthian saints in Greece. This is Corinthians. Oh, he's restored the Corinthians in chapter three the, about the spiritual walk. Yeah, I am here. All right, honey. Uh, you want to take a while? Because you remember to continue talking. Uh, it's up to you. Do you have something of the Lord? Yeah, I was going to talk about it, but you guys guess you got something already. Go ahead. I'll do it another time. Could you take over? I was going to talk in First Corinthians chapter three and verse one, way to twelve. Twelve. But okay, if you want, to, go ahead. You got it. You got it. Go ahead. Do it. Talk. All right, I'm not, back the, to you. Delivery, the delivery still hasn't got here, so I might have to. Oh, so oh, so, all right, all right, I'm continue. All right, so, all right, God bless. Uh, first Corinthians got saints, chapter 3, verse 1, and start the reading in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. I, brother, could not, uh, I, brother, could not speak into you spiritual pe people, but as carnal, as babes in Christ. So, Paul said, I couldn't speak to you spiritual, why? Because you were still babes. You see, in this walk, we got to cannot be a baby. No, no, we get you, ba no, we come out the world, but we get you start growing. But sometimes we're not ready for certain things that cannot give us things we cannot talk about because we know how the revelation of that word you need to grow in the grace and knowledge. Already, according to Second Peter 3 18, you got to grow in grace and knowledge. You got to be on the mentor, you got to be on the uh, pastor who teach you the word constantly. And if you got Bible study, run to those Bible studies. If he's somewhere teaching or preaching, listen to what he says. Because you know what? God's going to give a revelation to you. You write it down in the paper. Amen? So if you're still, that's why it says, hey, Paul, I can, you couldn't speak to him spiritual. Like right? they were carnal. What's that carnal person? He's still flesh. He's still uh, foolish, according to Romans. Says, Paul says to be carnal minds there, but to be spiritual minds, life and peace. Well, the carnal mind consider things that got foolishness, you see? And people don't consider things because they're foolish, because their mind is dead. It's closed. It's, it's, it's not there. It's not, it's, not, it's not alive in the spirit. So it's a lot of babies in the body of Christ that wants to pamper. He wants to feed them. When you was born again, you was a baby. You just started living spiritually. Now God gotta, gotta feed you by the preparation of right food, preparation of uh, baby food, and you start growing. That's what it says First uh, Peter 2, 2, as a newborn baby, deserve the milk you will grow thereby. So we gotta grow in the things of the spirit, man. We gotta continue growing. And what's the purpose? Look, let me go quickly to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Look what it says here, Paul, to the saints in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Look what he says, that you should know, look at the purpose, that you should no longer be children. Toss and fro, carried by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting. So the purpose by keeping ourselves in the sound of doctrine. When you know the son of doctrine, nobody could deceive you. You're not a baby no more. You know what's the word of God, the true word of God, what's the false uh, doctrines. But it's sad to say, many inside the church, they're still running to different places when I stay in one place God has put on them. And God puts you in a place, you're getting spiritual fed, you stay there. Now, if you move to another place without God's permission, you're going to get deceived. Because the enemy could be, the enemy got his churches and he got his false doctrines. And he could deceive people by the, by the millions out there, man, millions and millions. If the thing is God's way, it's not God's way. That's what God said in the, in the, in the, in the, John, in the John book of John, the gospel, those who go before me are thieves and robbers. You see, they're thieves and robbers. 
So we gotta watch out for those type of people, but we gotta grow. So you, first, you gotta grow in the things of God. That's what says in Second Luke says in verse two. Now, I feel you, I feel you milk, not solid food. Until now, you are not able to receive. Even now, you are not still not able. You see, it's a repeat. Solid food belongs to those that grow in the spirit. God wants all of us to grow, but it's a price to pay. We gotta continue going from growing from faith to faith. And the only way you're going to grow is by what says Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. And the more, that's what says Paul to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 2, 15. He says, Timothy, he was a young pastor, man. He was young, like 25 years old. And Paul was teaching, I was a spiritual son. And he told him, uh, study yourself with proven to God, workmanship, writing the word of truth. You see, you got to study yourself with proven to God. You got to prove yourself. Now, you're not ashamed of the word. You got to prove yourself to the word. You got to study the scriptures. And many are doing it. They take a lot of, a whole, like, a whole day, they do a lot of stuff because we got to take care of our life, we got to take care of our bodies, we got to take care of situations, our bills, our lives, our everything. But you got to get time for the Word of God. We just read him for Psalms 1, he meditates the Word day and night. You see that? He gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he's going to drop, he's going to, everything he does is going to prosper according to Psalms 1. What are you meditating? What are you seeking? Are you meditating on things of the Lord first or are you meditating on situations and problems? So it says right here again, I feel you milk, not solid food, for until now you're not able. You see? Then says in three, for you are still what? Carnal. That's ugly, man. And there's a lot of carnal people in this church. Why? Because they're still carnal. They still work things, the things of the flesh. That's what God, Paul says. Walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What says you are still carnal for where there are envy, strife, division among you. Are you not carnal? Have behaved like, every, like, a, man, like a man, you see? So when strife and envy, all this stuff, stuff is you, that's the reflection of the person. You still got to, you got to die to those fruits of the flesh. Flesh got to be crucified, got to die. Paul says, I die daily. So when you die to that flesh, you start walking in the spirit, you're going to start bringing the fruits of the spirit. We got a choice to walk in the spirit or walk in the spirit of the flesh. You can walk all your rest of your life in the and be in a church and a fellowship with my brothers and sisters, and you can live your, your private little lifestyle, but it ain't going to work. Everything's going to come to the light sooner or later. You see, it's a lot of kind of people that don't understand that because they don't want to submit to the, 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 the leading of the Holy Spirit. There's all the mature people. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. They're dangerous in certain ways. Why? Because they don't. They make some wrong decisions. And if that person is there, as a, if that person is out of the church trying to make a con, to, uh, give somebody a counsel, you ain't to watch out for that person, man. Because he don't have the mind of the, he don't have the mind of the spirit. He got the mind of the a self, the old nature, and it's corrupt. It's lie, deception, manipulation. Do you see that? Um. Uh, Look what it says in four. For when we said, I am a Paul, I never said, I am Apollos. I'm not uh, all carnal. Look what Paul look what says in all carnal. You cannot follow people. We got to follow the Lord. God has pushed, lead us in a pathway to show us different, to walk in this long journey. He'll bring people from different avenues to teach you if you allow the Holy Spirit. But if you guys concerned that person came from the Lord. That's what it says in the epistles of John, verse 41. Beloved, do not believe your spirit. Try the spirits that come from the Lord. Through the Holy Spirit is going to teach you this is for me or it's not for you. It's not for the Lord. Keep away from that person. It's for the Lord. Stay with that person. Look what says in five. Who then is Paul? Who is Paulos? He was a mighty man of God. Paul was a mighty apostle of God. He don't have to be apostles. Apostles was a mighty man of the scriptures. He was equally in the, in the scriptures and words, man. He was, he was another apostle. But he got used mightily. Amen? But ministers through whom you believe as the Lord has given to each one, you see? Look what says in 6, I plant Apollo's water. Paul says, I plant Apollo's water, but God gives increases. You see, God who gives the increases. We got to stay on the repeat on the right leadership, and God's going to increase us. The more we submit to God's order, God's true doctrine, we're going to start growing. I guarantee you that. By the time you're going to start growing the fruits of the Spirit, and from the fruits of the Spirit, you're going to start growing the gifts of the Spirit. Why? Because there's nine fruits of the Spirit. It's also nine gifts of the Spirit. It's nine gifts. How far do you want to go? I ask you my question to you. How far do you want to go in God's ways? Do you want to go to level 10, level 9? What levels do you want to go to? It's, it's beyond. It's levels to go other dimensions of glory. But it's a price to pay. You see that? The God says in um, 7, so then either he who plants or either that he water, but God who gives the increase is God. The, well, that's what God got her eyes on the Lord constantly, seeking the Lord's will, seeking the Lord through his word. That's what it says Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the ultimate finish of your faith. You cannot depend on people. You got to depend on the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ. Because it's Jesus Christ we're looking at. Jesus Christ and the cross. You got to stay in the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. 
Because in the cross, he died for the entire world. In the cross, he gave us back eternal life. In the cross, he gave us back everything that was stolen from us. And we're not looking at men in a wooden stake, like, like, like a Roman torture. No, he came off the cross already. According to Corinthians, Paul says, according to the scripture, he, was, he died. According to the scripture, he was buried. According to the scripture, he rose again the third day. And according to the scriptures, and he's coming back for us. So we got to stay eyes upon our Lord and Savior, amen? Through the scriptures. Look, it says in, um, in 8, Now he who plants and he who water are one. Each one should receive his own reward according to his own labor. You see, you gotta, you're gonna receive, you're, each one is going to receive his own reward according to your labor. And when you start growing the things of the Lord, God's going to put you to labor. It's like a person. We got to labor to you know to live, right? We got to work. We got our business. We got to continue working so we could produce. We could increase. It's the same thing, the things of the spirit. When God puts you to work in his, in his time clock, in his spiritual kingdom, you start, God starts blessing you beyond your dreams because you're working for him. You check in, you check out. You check in, you check out. He, as example, I used to go, my, my, my dear brother Vinny, we used to go out there in the streets. We used to go out there and give out tracks. I remember, we used to go out there across the bridge over in the bronze. And we used to give out tracks to the people. We tell them, you know, Jesus, Jesus loves you. You know, we talk to them about the Lord. I mean, remember that, we used to do that. That's how you start. What you do, you're working for the Lord. And for them, God give you another project and another project where he could trust you. You start breaking up the shyness, the ignorance, whatever, and God's gonna, he just give you revelation and words to tell the people about Jesus Christ. You see, you start laboring for the Lord. We all laborers, but we got to sit on, we got to sit on and be trained. It's like you're going to a job and you got to get trained. You got to get uh, information, right? You got to get the skill. And once you get that skill, you know what you got to do next already. You already prepared for that job, that's a position. That's the thing, the things of the Lord. That's where you're laboring for the Lord. Amen. What says in that? For we are God's fellow workers, you see? Uh, God's field, you are God's building. We want to be God's workers, we work for the Lord. Two, you are God's, we God's field. So what's the field? They, they put seed in that field. God wants to put the seeds of the, of the, of the fruits of the Spirit in your field so you can bear the fruits of the Spirit. And when you bear the fruits of the Spirit, you're going to bear the gifts of the Spirit. Do you see that? And it also says the same verse, you, we are God's building. So you become God's temple. Paul told the Corinthians, you are the, Paul, when he was in Greece, it was a beautiful temple. He told the whole congregation when he was talking to them, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are, Christ said, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He didn't talk about his temple there. He, he was talking about them. They became the temple of the Holy Spirit. You see that? We come to the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the old covenant, he's the ruin in the tabernacle. Now he's not the ruin the tabernacle on the ark of the covenant. Now he's the one inside. He's the in the New Testament. He's inside of us. In other words, amen. Look what it says nine, ten on me. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as the wise master builder, I had laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds. You know, repeat, let each one take heed how he builds upon it. <laughs> so other fund, excuse me, other foundation God had raised up, other men, women of God had laid a foundation. Now we take over that foundation, in other words. You know, repeat, he give you, he was a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another and builds upon it. See, so another came and built upon the foundation. He already did his tax. Now you come and take over that tax through your gift, through your ministry. And you start building that ministry inside of your life to go forth on that foundation. Because it's good grounds, in other words. You see that? For, look what it says. For each, for, let each one take he how he builds. So we got to take he how he built. Are you building spiritually or are you building carnally? Are you building the love of God or the hate of God? So whatever you put in God's kingdom is going to manifest sooner or later. So we got to take he to the, to the, the seed we are planting in our lives. And the more we get instructed through the Holy Spirit, the more we got to do for God, the more we're going to grow in the things of the law. And God's going to promote us because in the, God's kingdom is promotion. Promotion comes out in different ways. You know that? You start growing in the gifts of the Spirit. You start growing as an example, as a teacher of the Word of God, evangelist, a pastor, a prophet, an apostle. Forget about it. But I tell you, you'll be, up, you'll be sky high. God's just, just opening doors for you. In his time, he opened doors for you to send you to this, to this country, to this group of people, to these churches, to help them on both of the ministries. What is it about? Helping them. What was God, what's God's um, uh, this, uh, purpose for each one of us? When he was in chapter 1 of Acts, he told the apostles we about to go up to heaven. He told the disciples, he sp after his 40 years of passion, he spoke to work and ministry, service and ministry, service and ministry. And this walk, we serve and minister. We serve and minister. We become servants of the Lord, you see? When he, took, when he came around to the disciples, he took off his garments and he put a towel around his waist. He said, what do you think I'm doing here? He said, I'm, you, I'm serving. He said, yes, master, you're serving. He was serving them. He said, since you got to do to others, you got to serve. And when we serve, God's going to promote us. Because the more we serve, the more God's going to give us more open doors. We go forth and save souls could be one through our life, through our gifts, through our ministry. 
That's what it's like in Prophet Solomon. Those are wise who save souls. Amen. The God says again, eleven. For no foundation can anyone leave, but that which is laid is which is Jesus Christ. There's no other foundation. There's other foundation they ain't going to exist already. They're going to they're going to fall flat in the faith. The only thing that's going to stand is Jesus Christ. The foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. People have raised up in certain ways. Example: a lot of cultists have raised up, say they were Christ. They have been knocked out. A lot of foolish people have followed these men, and they've been they've been they've been, they've been they have been killed by these men. What was the uh, correction? He said he was Christ in the flesh. He was taken to Diana, all these thousands of people, and he slaughtered all of them. Now, uh, uh, this guy, uh, no, no, it was Jim Jones. Yeah, Jim Jones. Then came Koresh in the state. Another guy, he was talking in the book of Revelation with his machine gun. Wait a minute. That's all out of order. That's all carnal. It's his order. It's out of function. That's not God's word. He was preaching something else. He was all the I gotta go. Ricardo, I gotta go. All right, sweetie. God bless you, sweetie. God bless. Okay, uh, yeah, um, Yuli. In 12, I'm going to get back to Bishop. In 12 says, if anyone builds on a, on a foundation that which is gold, silver, or priceless stones and wood, or hay or straw. In other words, are you building your, you, are you building your building on a foundation of gold and silver? What silver and gold is going to be trying to fire by the Lord? He's going to try us in the fire. He's going to be trying to fire so see what you really, because he wants you to become genuine and for real. What is um, stone and wood, uh, um, um, price, uh, wood and, and hay, it's not, it's not real. It's not, it's not for real. Those things burn up easily. The fire will consume them. You see, you could be for real. It could be real. It's up to you. You could be for real. When you're for real, God's going to put you through the fire so you could build your spiritual wall. And when you build up in a spiritual wall, you become a, a mighty person of God. God uses it for his glory and purpose and plans. You don't have to worry about nothing. A guy's using it for his purpose and plans in different avenues, in different ways, because you've been trained. You've been, you went through your trials and tribulations. You've been, you have learned the word. You have went through different uh, attacks of the enemy, and you know the next line. You know the next move of the devil, because you know already, already. And each person as well had an experience of the Lord. Each one had an experience. See, without experience, we're going to get knocked out by the devil. But God gives each one's experience. And when you get experience, you know what's going on. You know how to play that game. Amen? You know, how, you know the game back and forth. The devil could throw all his, all his nonsense and foolishness, all his lies, but he cannot get you. Because you know the next move is God. He's going to show you what, what's the next move through the Holy Spirit. Do you see that, guys? Amen? The quote says here, and, um, let me see. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Praise the Lord. And I want you guys to continue you know, getting filled with the Lord, get filled with the Word, continue to get, stay humble and broken. That's what God said. He was just a problem. He gets more Christian to the humble. So let's continue searching for the Lord. He got the last answer for our situation and problems. I don't care what you're going through. He's going to give you the breakthrough sooner or later if you continue searching for him. Don't give up, my brothers and sisters. Do not give up. Stay faithful. Stay strong. Stand fast. Listen to what God says through the word. Listen to the voice of the spirit, not the voice of people. God bless. Bishop. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's powerful. In verse 11, it says, The other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus. The foundation that has to be laid, and this is what I'm always saying to the church, you want prosperity? You want to prosper? You build on the foundation of God's word. You build on God's will. God's will will always prosper. A lot of people might look at me like a, in the exterior as a regular girl. But when I look at myself, I see myself wealthy because I make sure that when we plant, we have to plant according to the word of God. And when you plant according to the word of God, you surely are going to get blessed. Hallelujah. The blessings overtakes us. The blessing follows us. The Lord bless us in the country. The Lord blesses us in the city. The Lord blesses everything that we do, our work, our companies. God enlarges us mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. You know, when all these attacks come, what I do is, is I get into prayer. God says it's so deep. As a matter of fact, I was doing a study on it yesterday so that I could shift you a little bit to where, where God pushes me on his will. And it, it's exactly what, what, what the man of God is talking about. If you're a child of God and you understand, not if, I believe you're a child of God. So since you're a child of God, you got to understand that God is sovereign and his kingdom is forever. And in this earth, there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of Satan and there's the kingdom of God. God's given the children of God the power 
which I don't get tired of saying it, over all the power of the enemy. It sounds crazy, especially when you see so much destruction. But God says through much trials and tribulation will enter his kingdom. And that doesn't mean that trials and tribulations are going to defeat us. It just means that we got to go through these valleys and they make us uncomfortable because we're going through it. But at the end of the valley is the victory. And if we're sowing according to God's kingdom and according to God's will, we got to get a godly harvest because darkness does not overcome light. Light overcomes darkness. And I love being on the winning side. But the thing is that in the middle, if, if the path is this long, let me write a line. See that? People stop in mid path and they don't get their blessing. The blessing's all the way over here. You got to go all the way to the end. The battle is on to the end. That's what he said. He that endures to the end shall be saved. And, and endurance is something that's a fruit of the spirit. <laughs> you got to suffer long. You got to be patient. You got to be kind. You got to be gentle. You got to be meek. And in this walk, you know, you got to press, you got to persevere, you got to push, you got to continue to believe. That's why it's called the fight of faith. What are you believing for? What are you believing for? Hallelujah. You know, there are verses like, um, which I was, I was studying yesterday, and, and I wrote them down. It says, nothing is impossible to them that believe. Do you know what that means? Woo. That, that thing just bubbles in my spirit. If I believe, nothing's impossible for me. And I'm telling you, when, when you see that tree, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print that picture, and I'm going to put that picture in my in, in somewhere so that people can see it. That tree fell from its roots. Hallelujah. And if nothing's impossible for me, because like I told you, I'm, I'm kind of silly when it comes to my faith. I stand in front of things and I'm, I'm like, well, Lord, you said that if I do this, this is going to happen and I'm going to just wait for you to do it. And when I see it, oh, my God, my eyes open up like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Lord, you really did it. I mean, wow. And, you know, the power of the word is just amazing. You know, I, I love that verse that says that, that God's word is above his name. Hallelujah. You know, if you know anything about the power of the name of Jesus, if you've experienced the power of the name of Jesus the way I've experienced it, and, and you get it in your mind that the word of God is above the name of Jesus. And I've seen the power of the name. I've seen dead raised. I've seen people delivered. I've seen livers being created. I've seen hearts change, heart transplants. I've seen just because of the name of Jesus. Miracles. I deal with so many people. I've seen deliverance. I've seen people become healthy and full of the Holy Spirit. When they accept Jesus Christ, their whole life changes. That's the born again miracle. Hallelujah. It happened to me. Not only was I delivered from demons, but I was delivered and became a brand new creation. I have this amazing relationship with God. And that happened through the mighty name of Jesus and the work of the cross. The power of the name is amazing. But the word of God says that his word is above his name. I want to get that verse for you guys so you guys can enjoy that, um, that uh, verse. I believe that that's in Psalms 38, 138 verse 2. Um, and I'm reading from the King James Version, hallelujah, because some versions, they water it down and they try to make you make it simpler. I, I just like that old, good old world when God converted this king and he winded up interpreting the Bible and maybe. Um, hold on. 
138 verse 2. It says, I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy holy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Woo! -wee! I understand the power and the authority of the name yeah. of Jesus. And if oh. the word of God is above his name, mm -mm 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 -mm, that means take it to the bank and cash it. And this is why I have this faith. You know, my faith is on the word of God. It's like I gamble with his word. I mean, I don't know if you understand that. There are people that they have a lot of faith in chance. They have a lot of faith in relationships. They, there are people that even have faith in that God don't exist. There are people that have faith in the devil. Me, my faith is in the word of God. And I put everything that I have on it, and I, I run to plant those seeds. When I see an opportunity to do something that the Word of God says, I run for it. Because I want the harvest of what the Word of God says. If the Word of God says give, then give and it shall be given to you, then hello, I'm going to give. If the Word of God says I'm healed by the shites of Jesus, every time the devil attacks me, in my body, I start rebuking him and telling him how healed I am. I counter it with, with the truth. <laughs> and I always get a manifestation because the other day the enemy wanted to break my knee. I felt like my knee was breaking in a thousand pieces. I started praying about it and talking to the Lord about it. And today my knee is better than it was yesterday. You know why? Because the healing power has to manifest. Glory to God. Because I'm not using my own power, my own name, my own word, my own authority. No, I'm using the name of Jesus, the, the word of God, and, and, and the authority of God's kingdom. I'm only here representing what's written. We're only here executing judgments written. That's in first in, 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 in the Psalms. That the, it's the saints' privilege. And you know what? When we do that, we do it with fire. Man, man, if you could only see yourself, when you say the word of God, the word, and, and, and you're a child of God that's walking in spirit and truth, that word of God comes like fire because God says we ministers of fire. Now, if you're playing with sin and you're fooling around with the world and, and, and you're not doing what God wants you to do, that power and that anointing breaks out of your life and then you have to re-reconcile with God that's why we always constantly have to be asking God for forgiveness I don't care what religion you're in or what what church you're in I believe and this is my true faith I believe that you're a child of God that's full of the Holy Spirit I don't care what domination you're in a non-dominational and you believe in the Holy Spirit and the living word, and you believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you believe in this word from Genesis to Revelation as it is written without adding and without taking, and you believe in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and you use the name of Jesus, that God's giving you power because God says, whosoever believe in me. See, I can't change. Lizardo's equipped to, to build up the body of Christ in a different avenue. And I'm built to equip the body of Christ in a different avenue. My job is to fight and rebuke the enemy and stay watchful and I continue to intercede for the body and, and, and humanity and just bring salvation to whoever, you know? And I totally agree with the word of God. Excuse me. I got the door open, so I'm kind of cold. So praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited about the word of God. I'm actually excited about this week. Do you believe it's 23 days before Christmas? 
Can you guys believe that? 23 days before Christmas. Hallelujah. And I, I like Christmas. You know, it represents the birth of Jesus Christ. So I, I, I like Christmas. I'm going to pray that the Lord blesses us, you know. I'm going to pray as the Holy Spirit um, leads me now. We're going to start to pray. I agree that if we lay, I, I want to show you before I, I pray, there's a verse that I want to show you that I have based. There's two verses that I have based my whole life on. One is in Isaiah 53 that says that it, the Lord took pleasure in planting Jesus Christ's life because basically that's what the verse says. And I'm going to show it to you. I believe it's Isaiah 53, 10. On Wednesday, we're going to go to the street. Hallelujah. And we're going to start recording these. I don't know if we should go live on Zoom. Maybe I should put it live on Zoom so you guys can see us. I could just put my phone up. I'm probably going to buy something to put our phone, my phone up, or I could, I, I'm going to see how I put it live on Zoom. I'll probably send you guys uh, a notification. So it says, um, Isaiah 53, verse 10. And I have such strong faith in this. And this is where prosperity comes from. This is how God revealed to me that if I follow his will, I am going to prosper in such a way. He says, just link into my work. And this is what the man of God was talking about. If you're a child of God, you have to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you grow and you let the Holy Spirit, you know, you can lead to your own understanding. You got to let the Holy Spirit do this in your life. I didn't make myself me. He built me up. He showed me. He built me. He taught me. He took me. He's the one that tells me, this is what I want you to do. And this is how I want you to do it. God does that. God is not dead. He's very much alive. Excuse me. Okay, God is very much alive. The same way he spoke to Moses and gave him the, the example on how to build the tabernacle is the same way that God is talking to us. The same way he spoke to David and told him how to build the temple of Solomon is the same way he's talking to us. The same way he spoke to Apostle Paul and gave him the pattern of what? Christ in us is the hope of glory. It's the same way God is talking to us. God has the pattern and, and, and the direction for our lives. We have to look unto Jesus, the finisher and author of our faith. He says in his word in, in Isaiah 53, 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Bruise whom? Jesus. He has put him to grief. Yes, he did. He put him to grief. He died on that cross. That was not a joyful moment. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, because he did, he gave his life for sin. The father gave Jesus Christ for the sins of humanity. And look what else it says. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Uh, Sylvia, how does your verse read that, your Bible? It says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. I'm sorry, I had I changed my... um. Okay, you changed it. It's okay. I, I changed it to King James, to the King James, but I'll put it back. It's the new King James. I was trying to read it the way you were reading it before. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, it's it good. Goes. So just leave it like that. So. No, no, let me read it. Okay, go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall 
see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. So when I read that verse, I understood that the Father has planted a seed, and the seed is Jesus Christ. And he says that this seed will be prolonged. In other words, it will continue to produce. And that seed that he planted is going to prosper. And I was like, wow, Lord, you have shown me the road of prosperity through that. If I just link into your work, because it's just going to prosper. That is going to continue to, to, to give birth. It's going to continue and continue and continue and continue. And if anybody else lays another foundation, which is not Jesus Christ and his purpose and the salvation of the souls, they, got, they lay in a weak foundation in their life. Uh, this foundation is indestructible. This foundation is unmovable. This foundation is for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? That's when I went to Romans 8.14 that says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. I don't have any other purpose in my life. I only have one purpose, and that's to continue to build in the foundation of the Father. Paul plants... Apollos plants, Paul, but God gives, and um, Jesus even planted, but the Father is giving the increase. And I receive that increase because I'm going to continue to plant, I'm going to continue to sow, and I'm expecting to reap. Hallelujah. I'm just in expectancy, praise the Lord. Like I tell the church, I'm pregnant for the will of God. I am pregnant for the will of God. All I want to do is see souls come to the kingdom. And he that wise, that's wise saves souls. Our life has to be dedicated and focused on the perfect will of God. Even in what you're doing, your sole purpose has to be, if God's blessed you with money, then your money should be to seek to, part, to, to support those that are out there, if you can, in whatever gifting God's given you, if you're the one that's bringing in the finances for the kingdom, because that's called the kingly anointing, then you have to look for those ministries that you support so that the house of God can have me. Because in everything we're doing work, hallelujah, for the kingdom, and everything that God's given us has to be projected in that work, hallelujah. That has to be your purpose. And if you're a giver, you know, in, for the kingdom's sake, then what happens is that those that give receive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's a law of God for everything and that we do. Hallelujah. And if you and if that's where you're at in the kingdom, you, you're, the, you're the investor and you're the planter. Because some plant, some water, some preach, some teach, some heal, some do miracles, some do great exploits for God. And it's all for the saving of the soul. Uh, I think the man of God's got something to say. Hallelujah. Honey, don't you Honey, go to Romans quickly, because if you're in that subject, go to Romans chapter 12 quickly. Romans 12, 12. Go there. Romans 12, quickly. Okay. Start from verse, start from verse 4 all the way to uh, 9. You're talking about the gifts. You know, it's funny, because I stand outside, and I raise up my hands to the Lord. I said, Lord, I have no idea what I'm going to tell these people today. And then when I open up my mouth, I, and I always say this, I open up my mouth and I never shut up. <laughs> I try though, but you know what? These are things that are of God. And we're talking about bringing the will of God to, to manifestation, hallelujah. You know, that's perfect. You know what Jesus said about that? Look it up, my me is to do the will of the Father and to fulfill it. That should be our meat, hallelujah. God put you in this planet and awoke you from the dead, made you alive and well in the spirit so that you can fulfill his will on earth. God has chosen you. 
Got and it. we have to be like Jesus. We have to say it. My meat is to do the will of the Father and to fulfill it. Amen. What did God call you to do? That's right. All right. Romans 12, verse 4 to 10. Read that. Of course, you're talking, you're talking on the subject of okay. the gifts in the body. Go ahead. Romans 12, starting verse 4 to 10. Go ahead. You're in the flow. Go ahead. Read, read that. It goes with what you're saying. Romans 4. No, no, no. 12, 12. Chapter 12, verse 4. Okay. Romans 12. We're going to conclude. I'm trying to conclude. Hurry up. And Hurry up. that is going to be the Bible to back it up. Just read it, read it, read it, read it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it, Romans Time is going 12. fast. Chapter 12, 12 verse 42. 12. 42. As we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. See, so if anybody ever says to me that they're not part of the body, they don't know the word because the word of God says that we're all members of one body in Christ. Right? And number five, it says, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one member of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether of prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. I'm going to leave it right there. But it also says, not slothfulness in business, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, God's calling us, each and every one of us, to do something else. If you're gifted in one area and it's simple for you, God is going to use you in that area. Don't be discouraged because your gifting is not like everybody else. Don't. Just let God continue to build you up and push you to the right direction in the kingdom. If you understand, wave at me. Don't think you went to college in vain or, or your career oh, no. is not sufficient or your giftings are so different from everybody else. You could just be a king, kingly anointing that God's giving you the, the wealth of the nation so that you could support the ministry. But you still got to keep your life, spiritual life going. You still got to know that you have the authority of the kingdom. You still got to pray for others. You know, we can't be slacked in our spiritual walk just because God has us working a secular job. Because, honey, let me tell you, I would be downhill if that was the cause. Because I got so much physical work. I work physically. And then I go home and I got more physical work. And then I'm a wife and doing all this house chores, physical work. And then ministry is physical work plus spiritual work. So physical work is not an excuse not to keep your spiritual life up. Can I hear an amen? No, 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 no. Spiritual life. Amen. God first and everything else will be added on to us. But we got to link into the work of God. Say it to yourself. I'm linking in. Wherever I sit, if you're a teacher, teach. If you're a giver, give. If you're a sower, sow. If you sow, do you know embroidery is a gift of God? It's all in the Bible. But you know what? A lot of people don't study. It's all in the Word. Craftsmanship is a gift of God. Read, writing is a gift of God. There's so many things in the Bible that God's given us. The ability to manage money is a gift of God. Hallelujah. To be
be good stewards is the gift of God. Even, even in the Bible, God said, you unfaithful steward. Stewardship is a gift of God. Talents are a gift of God. What is your talent? You got to put it for work for the Lord. If you can draw, you should be drawing beautiful morals that says Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. <laughs> hey, everything for the glory of God. Amen. If you make music, you should be making melodies for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you write, you should be writing that Jesus Christ is good. If you, if you, if, if you're, whatever you're doing, whatever you put your hands should be unto the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. And we have to be good stewards of whatever God is putting in our lives. Let God build you up. Stop going crazy. Oh, relax. Let God build you up. People want to go ahead of God. It happened to Abraham. He went ahead of God and he made Ishmael. And look at the disaster. Two nations fighting. Brothers. They're brothers, and they're killing each other just because they went ahead of God. It's a big consequence for going ahead of God. Amen? Father, we thank you, Lord God. We love you so much, Lord. We just want to do your will, but we're like children. We need you to give us a tata quieto from time to time. That means a stay still. I said it in Spanish. Hallelujah. I want to build up a Spanish department, but I'm taking my time. I want to build up a, a Caribbean department, but I'm taking my time. I want to continue to build in Connecticut, but I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing, Lord. I'm not, I'm not rushing to do anything that you have not led us to do. Right now, I want to pray for the hearers out there that are hearing and, and they're moving quickly, that they like to go before God. We rebuke that. The word says, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. God says, be anxious for nothing but in all things with prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known unto God. And he says, and the God of peace. It surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. We love you in the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray for the plants. Put your hands up in the air. Pray for the works of your hands. All your plans, all your purposes, all your desires, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift those hands up. I don't see the hands. Lift them up. Lift them up. Lord, we present our hands to you, the work of our hands. You said that the work of our hands will be blessed in the city, in the country. Everything that we put our hands to will be blessed. You said you will bless it and you will increase it as long as we're doing it for the glory of your name. Father, we take the limitations off the work of our hands. Even if we're doing billing, let it be for your glory. Even if we're doing art, even if we're doing music, even if we're building up ministry, even if we're prophesying, even if we're teaching, even if we're working with our computers, whatever we're doing, Lord, help our minds be set on you. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless the work of our hands. As I extend my hands, and you can touch the screen so that God can order the work of your hands. There it is. I'm anointing your hands so that the work of your hands could be pure in the eyes of God. God says that we are to lift up holy hands. If you have done anything that's defiled with your hands right now, I apply the blood of Jesus all over your hands. I break the powers of hell and I loose your hands from the powers of hell in the mighty name of Jesus, so that God can bless the work of your hands. Who can ascend to the hills of the Lord? Who? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Father, you said the work of our hands is blessed. We want to link it to your work. And we want to be blessed by you in Jesus' mighty name. This is the prayer that I pray today because this is what you spoke about. We 
decree it, we declare it, and we establish it. Your word says that right words are possible. In Jesus' mighty name, you say you've given me power of life and death. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless the work of your hand. Increase. I take the limit for the work of your hand. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Now I want to bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord Jesus Christ give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for joining us. Once again, this is Messengers of Life Ministries. And um, we're just going to ask you to join us. You can always find us at Pastor Lizardo Zambra at gmail.com. If you email me and you tell me you want to join this, we will gladly send you an invitation. And you can come in live. Hallelujah. And if you're a prayer warrior, you can come on in. I don't care who you are, who you believe in. If you want an opportunity for us to pray for you and demonstrate that God is alive and well, just come on down because there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. There's no power greater than the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is holy and he's worthy to be praised. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. You can find us at angelicvoiceministries.com. We love you in the Lord. Don't forget that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And if you give your life to him, he will surely forgive you. you all you have to say is, Jesus Christ, forgive me. And I accept you and write my name in the book of life. And he will receive you and forgive your sins. And he will surely come back to you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can you say goodbye, Lizardo? God bless everybody. God bless you and have a beautiful, have a wonderful day. God bless. Amen. Katarina, sweet cat, can you say goodbye? Bye, everybody. God bless you. Thank you so much today. Amen. Can we say goodbye, Mr. Angelic Voices? God bless everyone. God bless. I love this one today, man. And I continue to stay blessed and stay anointed. In Jesus' name, amen. Kathy, let's, let's tell BJ we love him together on three. One, two, three. We love you, BJ. Uh, love you, BJ. <laughs> I love you too, man. Sylvia, can you say goodbye? Goodbye, everyone. Have a blessed day. Hope Sylvia, we love you, love you so much. We love you too. And my honey. There's my honey over here. Let me show you. Say hi, Vinny. Bless you, Vinny. Bless you. Love you, Vinny. God bless you. Love you I'm going over there to eat your, your chicken masala. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> you gotta hide it. Okay, uh, Sim, can you say goodbye, Papi, if you're there? I have a very spiritually gifted day. Happy holidays and God bless you and your family. Amen, amen. Don't forget that uh, this is Messages of Light Ministry. We love you in the Lord. Bye-bye now. <laughs>